Hello, everyone. Surprise, it's not Mike Smith. I'm so sorry about that. I know some of you guys maybe came from a long ways to see Mike Smith, but you got me today. It was a last minute, last minute kind of adjustment. So I just wanted to let you know, you got the B squad today, but we're, you know what? The Lord's going to move anyways, right? So I'm assuming that some of this is probably going to hit some of you guys and maybe, maybe you can learn from some of my mistakes is basically what I'm going to be sharing today. Uh, not so much a testimony, but just just on how you can help people get out of the new age, just from what I kind of uh, fell into. So that's kind of my hope for today is to just bring some new age traps that I fell into and, and really what happened to me through it all. And uh, so you guys can better become better ministers to other people to see it. You'll start to see the key words and everything. So that's basically what I was gonna I was gonna share on today. I'm gonna start off with prayer. Thank you, Father, for this day, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. We got another day that we get to breathe, and you're our breath and our in our lungs, Lord. Thank you for that. I thank you for what you did for me back in 2011. You pulled me out of the pits of hell, Lord, and I was I was deeply embedded into the new age, Lord. I'm forever uh, grateful for that, and I'm forever your servant, Lord. And I thank you, and I, and I give this teaching to you, Lord. It's not mine. It's yours. It's your testimony. And I just pray that you uh, minister to the people through it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So one of the things that is happening today is there's a lot of younger younger people that are falling into the new age so you, you're seeing this it's embedded into the school systems now it's uh we used to have my wife and i we used to have our daughters in public school and they were teaching yoga right in school everything was new age there were they were doing everything was embedding the new age into there right so the the problem with that is it's a it's a super easy religious system because there's no turning away from sin. There is no concept of sin in the new age. So it works out really well for everyone. So they can come into there and they can stay in the world. They can have their, their uh, out of marriage relationships. There's no, there's no consequences. They just do this spirituality thing. And one thing leads to the next, leads to the next, leads to the next. So that's kind of, what I wanted to do is just just explain to you guys how I fell fell into it, and I just want to let you know that it can happen to anybody. You know, I'm, I'm friends with a lot of you guys in here. If you guys know that I basically had schizophrenia and I was ready to kill myself because of the New Age, you wouldn't you wouldn't think that because of what Jesus did to me after that. But it can happen to anybody. Anybody can get get lured into this, and there's just little ways that Satan will pick you into this. So. We'll just kind of go over some of that stuff today. Uh, some of the phrases you'll hear from these younger generational people today is, I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. You know, you're going to hear that quite a bit. Um, and those are the people that are probably hurting the most, right? That you can tell them, hey, you start t talking to them about Jesus, and they all automatically start saying, hey, I'm not religious. Don't, don't bring Jesus to me, you know? So that, that's that's the phrase you're you're, you're hearing, and I'm religious, and, and I'm not, uh, or I'm not religious, but I am spiritual. That means that they're in some kind of trap into this new age system. You can pretty much bank on that. So you could probably give them pretty much any of this stuff. Satan can give them any of it, and they're gonna they're gonna take it in. So one of the things that you want to ask new agers, I'll get into what the new age. I'll just give you guys my brief description of what the new age is it's really hard to put it into one term right because it's so big there's so many different angles of it there's so much so i would look at it as more of like a cesspool of 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 spirituality and false religions and practices all mixed into one big uh, cesspool is what it is you know you've got false religions like hinduism and buddhism but you can't say that that's the new age because that's just part of the new age Right, you've got yoga that's into there, right? That's not that's not necessarily the new age either. That's part of the new age. Um, you've got all these different things that are part of the new age, and then there's a lot of things that people don't know that are part of the new age, like mo healing modalities, 
Reiki healing, even acupuncture, that's part of the new age system. So a lot of these things that um, people get tricked into, they don't really realize what that is. So that's what the new age is. It's, a, it's basically gonna be part of that new, that new world religion, that one world religion is coming out, that's, that's being pushed forward through the new age agenda. So all of this stuff, everything works in the new age system. I'm talking uh, Muslims, um, Hinduism, uh, even that false version of Christianity that works in the New Age. When you talk to New Agers, sometimes what you're going to hear is they're going to have the same lingo that we have, but it means something totally different. They're going to talk about the second coming of Christ, and you're going to think, wow, this person's a Christian. And they say, I love Jesus too, I love Jesus, this and that. Well, the, the question that you want to ask them is, what Jesus? Mm. Right? Because there's many false Jesuses, and the one in the New Age is real deceptive. And, and the thing is, you can't pin it down on just one of them because they'll use a different Jesus for whatever fits their narrative. So that's the question you want to ask them, who is Jesus? And a lot of them will not say that he's the only way to God. They'll just say that he's one way. He's one way, but you can have your way too, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a system where everybody wins in the end. There is no hell. There is no anything else. There, like I said, there's no sin. Um, so you got to ask them who the Jesus is. The Jesus that I thought was in the New Age was some type of an ascended master that came here to teach us Christ consciousness. That's what I bought into. The scripture that talks about the uh, unknowable God, that's the New Age. That's the Gnosticism. The New Age is the Gnosticism. So it is the unknown God. There is, they don't, they don't have, they just look at it as an energy. An energy force is God. And God is all, he's in all and everything. That's the unknowable God. You can't put a face to him. Well, guess what? The face is Jesus. That is God Almighty come in the flesh. So when you when you bring that up to a, a new age or that he is the he is the way the truth and the knife and nobody comes to the Father except through him, that's hostile to him at that point. And then you're going to hear things like, hey, you know, maybe he said that in there, but the Bible's been changed. You'll hear that a lot from new agers. How can we trust that the Bible is real? And, and once you get into that spot, it's, it's a real tough road. I've even dealt with that with Christians, longtime Christians that started falling back into their sin. And they wanted that to be uh, the case because, hey, if the Bible might not be true, maybe I can, maybe I can still have a live-in girlfriend, you know, because maybe, maybe that part of it wasn't in there, right? So that's, that's the, the new age, you know, there's many different new age. Jesus is one of them as he was an ascended master. Um, like I said, that came in to teach us Christ consciousness, that, told, that wanted to teach us that we are gods, ourselves. In, in ourselves, we are gods. And guess what? We don't have that in our nature, right? So um, we have God living in us, but we are not gods, and we never will become God. There is only one God in three persons, right? So that's the New Age Jesus, is the one that came here to say, hey, guess what? You guys are gods too. And that gets, that gets real, uh, real bad. So um, where did the New Age come from? Uh, just just in, the, in a general, it's, it's old. They call it the New Age, but it's really old, right? But the mother, the mother of New Age was a lady named uh, Blavana, uh, Madame uh, Blavatsky. She's the one that kind of coined the term New Age and brought it forward. That was back in the 1800s. That was when all the big major cults were coming out. If you look back into the history of the cults, most of them came out in the 1800s for some reason. You're talking Seventh-day Adventism, uh, just every single one of them seems the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they all came out in the 1800s. This is when the, the New Age, New Age st stuff came out as well. Uh, she would bring out books that glorified Satan. And, I, and when I got into the New Age, I didn't know. I, I could read these books and it was like it was blocked from me that she was glorifying Satan in these books. Uh, she, she said things like, 
Satan in reality is the highest divine spirit. That's what she would say in these books. So it, it is outward satanic at its core, but it's, it's got this veneer on it, like it's, it's loving and it's good and, and that. So um, she also had a magazine that was called Lucifer. So a lot of people don't realize that, um, but she, she ran a, a publication called Lucifer and, and that was her God. So that's who's behind the new age, Lucifer. And as she says, he's the highest divine light. He's not the, you know, he, she admitted he was the one that was against God, but he is the highest light. So she put, Luc she put Lucifer ahead, uh, above God. So another one, the father of the new age is, uh, is, uh, uh, is the guy, um, and he's drawing, drawing a blank right now, but, uh, uh, yeah, I can't remember what his name is. I should have wrote it down, but Crowley? Crowley, that's who it is. Good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Alistair Crowley was the father of the New Age, and he was a 33rd degree Freemason. And he had more uh, more garb from the from the Freemasons than anybody. He said if you put that on, he would he would have weighed more than an elephant. He had rooms full of that stuff. He was so decked out in Freemasonry, and he he would say things like uh, it wasn't enough just for him to, to be, to know Satan. He needed to know him personally and then become his chief of staff. That's how wicked this man was. They, they, he called himself the B666. So he was the most wicked man on earth. I mean, and even guys like Adolf Hitler were, were learning from him. So you want to say as, as much stuff as Adolf Hitler did was nothing compared to what Aleister Crowley did, because Aleister Crowley is in everything right now. He's in he's in Hollywood, he's in he's in the media. I mean, all the all the guys in Hollywood, they're wearing his shirts, Aleister Crowley shirts. It's all it's all Satanism, and and also what he taught the highest um, form of uh, of of spiritual energy was to sacrifice a young boy. You know so. So these, these, this goes deep, um, but not to get too far into that, I just wanted to show you that it's satanic at its roots. So when, you, when you're talking, you're ministering to somebody, and they're saying that New Age is good, you can bring up some facts to them right away. Hey, this is satanic, check, check these things out, and I'm going to give you a website. I'm not telling you to go on this website, but I'm telling you what's on this website. And this is a dead giveaway, too. It's called Joy of Satan. Joy of Satan Ministries website has everything that you'll ever see on the New Age on their website and they're promoting it. Tarot cards, astral travel, everything. It's yoga, Hinduism, Buddhism. That's a dead giveaway, right? Wow. For sure. You go on joy, that's, that's telling you the joy of Satan is in the New Age. So, and I'll just start to go into just a little bit. There was another lady that was heavily tied in with Madame Blavatsky. Her name was Alice Bailey. Mm -hmm. And when I got into uh, when I got into the New Age, I couldn't stop reading her books either, because the the cult that I was in. I'll go over that in a little bit. But uh, the cult that I was in said that her work and Blavatsky's and all that—that's called the, the Theological Society. That uh, that work was was recommended uh, for the material for our, uh, the cult that I was in. So, but she, she talks a lot about the Christ coming back, right? But this is a different Christ. This is another Jesus. And that was, a, that was her main work was to get this planet, they would say, raise the consciousness up to a high level so that the Christ can come back. And, and, and that's, that's the false Christ. So, like I said, when you talk to a new ager, yeah, I believe in the second coming. I believe all that stuff. I love Jesus. Jesus was a good man. He was a great teacher, this and that. But we're talking about a totally different Jesus, right? And then at the end times, it says, even the elect, if it were possible, will be deceived. So we got this new age, no matter what you look at it, no matter how you fry it, this thing's going to be a big part of the end times. This is where this deception is coming in, right? So... My first entry into this was at age 10 
we didn't grow up in a Christian family. In fact, when I grew up, we, we celebrated Christmas, but I, it was for some reason I didn't even know Jesus was even part, like it was in, out of my mind that I, I didn't even know who Jesus was. We never prayed, we never did any of that stuff, right? So, um, but when I was 10 years old, we had a Ouija board in the house, right? We had a, a Ouija board on, I know some of you guys maybe had that too. Parker Brothers Ouija board. My mom probably, you know, it was probably a setup by a demon and they gave it to her or something like that. And I had this Ouija board and we were, I remember just having a few friends and it was just like the commercial. No, you're moving it. No, you're moving it. No, you're moving it, right? Well, I didn't realize it, but I was taking in demons way back then, right? Through that. And then they went dormant for a while until I was uh, around 20 years old. I was working at this nightclub and uh, afterwards, uh, one of the gals that was working there too was like, hey, you know, I'm a psychic medium and, you know, you guys want to do, you guys want to do a Ouija board? I can, and she made her own Ouija board on this big table. And, uh, and we all thought, we were just kind of joking around. Anybody ever talked to me about anything that had to do with God or anything like that? I was so dead in my sins, I, didn't, I usually walked away. I didn't want nothing to do with it. I wanted nothing to do with spirituality, God, nothing. I had this, this hatred in my heart. But she, she asked that, and then I said, all right, whatever. So we had probably 10 people uh, around this table, and she, she, she made the different things for the Ouija board on the table, and then starts moving around, and then this thing's talking to us. There was an entity that was supposedly underneath this place it used to be a railroad uh, a railroad underneath and they, they made a bar nightclub right over the top of it so then that that entity was supposed to be uh, in that place so that was the one that they they talked to in there and she was the one doing it and then after the after she got done with it that entity flew her down on the floor and, and then she was just like laid out and then we were all you know half drunk so we we're still kind of Still kind of looking at it like, what the heck is this, you know? And then in the back of your head, you're still thinking, well, she could be just faking it, right? This could be fake. This, But then when she's walking out the door, we're all walking down, and all of a sudden she gets thrown down to the floor again. So this entity entered into her. But I'm not saying that. I mean, we obviously picked up spirits as well. You don't, you don't just sit in on something like that and not pick spirits up. So that was my first entry point into it. Um, and like I said, I, I didn't know much about it. And it, it's crazy, too, that that book, The Exorcist, the, the movie The Exorcist, was all about a 10-year-old boy. They, they made it into a girl on the, on the movie, but actually, in actuality, it was, a, it was a story about a 10-year-old boy that played with the Ouija board and got completely filled with demons. So that story for The Exorcist was around that 10-year-old boy. So I just want to let you know that because I was 10 when I played with that Ouija board and I know I picked those spirits up, but they can go dormant. Um, and then fast forward after that, I, I met my wife, uh, Teresa. Um, she starts talking to me about Jesus. Hey, you know, if we ever start a family, they're all going to know about Jesus. And I just had something inside of me, like just pushing away, you know, pushing away. And, and then... Uh, after a while, I just kind of, uh, she, she asked me, hey, do you want to get water baptized? She, she started getting me to go to church. But the, the reason why it worked for me, because I didn't, I didn't want nothing to do with like the music and stuff. So we, they had this set up at this church. I don't know it was God, because we all sat out, out in like the outer area, so we didn't have to be in the sanctuary area. So we could kind of sit back. There was still music going on, but I just thought all that stuff was weird. You know, I didn't grow up in church, nothing like that. But the Lord started moving on me because when we went to church, it seemed like the pastor was talking directly to me. Like it was just me and him talking. And then I was like, why, how is he calling everything out in my life? So I didn't know how that worked, but I know now, I mean, that's how the Holy Spirit does it, right? I mean, even on Thursday nights, uh, people come up to me and it's like, hey, Rick said this, this, and yeah, it's like, yeah, it's the Holy Ghost. That's how he does it, you know? So, um, but we, we we were going to that church, and then and then I still wasn't sold in, but then she asked me if I wanted to get water baptized. So there was a baptism coming up, and her brother was going to join, and, and then I said, all right, I'll do it. And then knowing in my heart I wasn't going to do it, I was going to purposely plan some 
some uh, work or something that weekend so I could get out of it. But when I uh, when I went I went to work that day and and then I talked to her on the phone and and I could just tell she was just broke down. She's like, "You're not gonna go." <laughs> And then I just felt like all of a sudden I got off the phone with her and I just knew I had to go get water baptized. So, so I went in and uh, it was like the angels were like compelling me to go get water baptized. And I went, I went and got water baptized. And uh, I remember when I, I got out of the water, I had a pill addiction back then. It was bad. I was on tramadol and uh, just, just some other ones. I was on some sleeping ambient pills and all this stuff. But um, when I got out of the water, I felt something leave me. And then God spoke to me and he said, no more pills. Mm -hmm. So yes. never took another pill after that. So I got delivered through that water baptism. And I knew something happened, but uh, I didn't know exactly what. And then the, uh, the main pastor was on the shore that day and he gave me a prophetic word. He said, hey, the Lord's going to use your voice someday to, to help people you know, in mighty ways. So, so then at that time, though, remember with Jesus, when he got out of the water, that's when he got tempted. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that, hey, just, yeah, go get water baptized. Well, they're not walking with the Lord. They're not doing anything. They're easy pickings for spirits. Mm -hmm. Jesus got tempted and he, he, he didn't fall for anything. He did, he did great. I didn't do so great. Mm -hmm. So that's where, <laughs> that's where the new age spirits hit me hard. They came right at me, and I didn't know. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. You know, I didn't. There wasn't a discipleship program at the church. I didn't have hardcore Christianity. I didn't have nobody telling me anything, but I had the Holy Spirit. But I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know what was going on at that point. I didn't read my Bible. So then, then I started to fall into all these different traps. Um, and the way that it started was just going to Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. just that bookstore. There's some, there's some highly demonic books in Barnes and Noble. Mm -hmm. So out of wanting to do self-help, right? Remember, self is not going to help you. Mm -hmm. right? It's got to be Jesus. I went into the self-help section, and guess what? I picked up Tony Robbins' book. <laughs> now, Tony Robbins, I'll get into it in a little bit, but he's deeply, deeply in, embedded into the New Age. Wow. Mm -hmm deeply embedded into the new age, the, the affirmations, all that stuff, right? So um, got into that, and then I bought a book on self-hypnosis. So I wanted to break that down to you too. I mean, hypnosis is highly demonic. Yeah. Self-hypnosis, going to a hypnotist. I mean, even Win Worley was a hypnotist before he got into the uh, deliverance ministry, but he got delivered of that. So. But the self-hypnosis, the thing was, is all this stuff was working. Mm -hmm. I was training my brain through these. I was making little uh, just voice recorders with, and putting me into a, a hypnotic trance and a hypnotic state. And whatever I was putting on there was working. So the demons were doing their things and I was, I was, I was doing all this stuff and it was working. So then that's the first foot in. Now, all right, what's next? What's next? What's next? Then I bought a book called Eight Minute Meditation. Mm -hmm. This was the one that did it. This was the one that broke the, broke the um, dam loose. This eight minute meditation. Now watch out for meditating. Right. When you're doing meditation and you're not, you're not meditating on scripture like the Lord says, watch out. Because this thing came in like a floodgate. I sat down, eight minute meditation, probably in the second, maybe the second time, all of a sudden, boom. Demons were flooding into my brain telling me I had all these different past lives I'm, and I, I was something special. I was going to be a world teacher. All these things that the new age, they just, they pump you up like you're something special. You're, you're, you're so great. You're this, you're that. And that's when I started believing in reincarnation. I started believing all this stuff. And it was all through that book, that eight minute meditation book. All right. So watch out when you're doing that. I just thought it was going to be mindful, you know, quiet my mind down, uh, help with my anxiety, uh, all this stuff. But it was, it was, the, it was really the floodgates that, that opened that up. Uh, and then I, I got into astral 
projection later. I'll go into that in a second. But uh, from that self, that eight minute meditation book, book, then I found a book called The Secret. So that one is, that's got some demons embedded into it. And they even throw a lot of scriptures in that one too to really sink it into you. Think you're like a good Christian doing it. And it's funny because that secret book, when that came out, when, when I was doing that, that was one of the things I was still going to church at that point. But that was one of the things that the pastor ex, ex, he exposed it right in front of me. And I was like, what in the heck? He's saying this is all demonic. This is all demonic. And I'm like, well, everything's working. I, I, I put it in my brain that, you know, this and that. And I, I say this amount and this comes to me and this. And, and then I thought, oh, the pastor's got to be wrong, right? But he did put that little bit of a seed of doubt in there for me. And that's what we need to do as, as ministers, right? We need to start putting the, the seeds of doubt. We're not always going to get somebody converted right away. We're not always, but if you put a rock in their shoe that they can't deal with, they're always going to want to deal with it later at some point. So just remember when you are ministering to people, even, even like Jehovah's Witnesses or something, a lot of times you're not going to convert them. But if you give them a scripture that they can't deal with, guess what? You might have been the one that started that process of them getting saved. So... That's what that did, that, that put a seed of doubt in me. I was like, okay, well, wait a minute, something's wrong with the secret. We were manifesting stuff like crazy. Um, anything we wanted was just coming to us. Uh, that was where all demons putting that in, right? Um, then, I, then I bought a book on how to, how to feel energy. Then, you know, they just teach you these things. Hey, put your hand, you know, activate your hands, activate your this and that, and start feeling energy. Those are all demons manipulating you through that. Mm -hmm. And then you start telling the energy what to go do, right? You start programming the energy. This is, this is primordial energy, all that stuff. It was, it was, uh, there was another pitfall, right? So I'm starting to feel the energy. Then, uh, then I get this astrology reading, a natal chart. Yeah. Uh, this was over the phone, give my birth date, the time stamp on it, all this stuff. Then I get this uh, natal chart written to me. And then all of a sudden, that's when the demons started telling me about the aliens and all these different, you know. You can't separate the New Age from aliens. You can't do it. There's absolutely no way. You're always going to get sucked into the alien side of it. Um, ancient aliens that show on there, yeah, I don't watch that stuff. The aliens is going to be a part of it. I got sucked into the aliens thing because through that, um, through that natal chart, they said, oh yeah, you're, this lady said, yeah, you're super special. You're a, you know, you're a star seed or an indigo child. I can't remember what she was telling me. And then I bought into it. And then I actually started, uh, I actually started watching these videos from this guy out in Sedona. Sedona is like the demon capital of the world. Do not go into those crystal shops, none of that stuff over there. But this guy from Sedona, he had this place called like Team Light. And uh, he was uh, getting everybody to, like he was counting, hey, all these different groups of aliens and this is your ancestry and all this stuff. And I bought into all that stuff too. And I... I almost wanted to move to Arizona prior to when we actually did, and I don't think my wife would have handled that one too well for that scenario. That was, yeah, that guy's pretty sick. I pray for that guy. Um, but yeah, I fell into the aliens thing, and, and the aliens were starting to, you know, I, I got into channeling and stuff like that, watching different uh, channelers, and the aliens started to afflict me at night as, as far as that was going on. and. Um, they get you to want to actually seek for that, like, you know, like seek for alien contact. Like these people are going to help, these aliens are going to help you. And so, so fell into that one. Um, and then the, the, the real reason I got connected with that guy was he, he did a, a, a video called how to astral project. And it was like a million views back then. I can't imagine how many there are now, but this video right here, suck me into it because then I learned how to astral project and get out of my body. So that's dangerous. That's a real, real dangerous practice there. In Ecclesiastes, it talks about the silver cord. And what ends up happening is uh, if you keep doing that for a prolonged, it doesn't matter, you know, whatever, these demons can clip that cord and then you're stuck into that spiritual realm. Your body dies. You can't get back in. 
So these enlightened sages and stuff that they, you know, they go out and they, they can't find them anymore. They go out on these, these hills and valleys and uh, to go meditate and nobody can find them anymore. That's probably what happened. They got into that spiritual realm and uh, they, cut, they clipped that silver cord and they died. So very dangerous. Um, you, can, you can get in, you'll see entities in there and, and they'll, they'll get you scared. Um, lucid dreaming got into that one. Um, lucid dreaming basically is you're controlling your dream. You get out of, out of your body again. You're controlling your dream. Got into that. Another thing that very, very dangerous practice. Uh, then, I, uh, then I got into muscle testing. Kinesiology. Watch out for kinesiology. You guys might think that's okay. Sometimes your chiropractors will do kinesiology on you. Just cut that stuff. That's all energy work. It's all dealing with the uh, chakra system. Um, kinesiology. Uh, yeah, so muscle testing, so sometimes they'll do it like this where they go like that and if you get if it's strong then you can you can eat that food or whatever you say. You, yeah, the arm, that's that's the perfect yeah, that's the one I was using. The arm. Yeah, you can put a body yeah, whatever whatever it is to you're going somewhere outside of the Lord for information. Now you've opened yourself up to the spirit realm. So these people, well, they, they taught me the kinesiology, and then I thought, well, if I muscle test this, then it's got to be right. You see, so you're setting yourself up. So I was deep embedded into that muscle testing, and uh, that's all new, it's all new age stuff, too. They're setting you up. What they're going to do for you is they ultimately want to get you on a plant-based diet so they can control you. So the, a lot of the new agers... They're on this like vegan stuff, you know, they, 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 the demons are easily controlled because not everybody does well on a, on a vegan diet with no meat. So a lot of times they can, some people do well with it, but some, a lot of people don't, but you can get real weak and get, you know, like I, I, was a, I was a vegetarian, I wasn't doing good on it. I wasn't doing good at all. I was down, I'm, I'm like a 210 pound person. I was down to 160. By the time this was when I was before I you know before I got saved I was it was bad so I was skin and bones so they want to get you on that so every time that you put something in front of you you're gonna get that bad muscle testing hey that's not for you and then before you know it you've got like three foods you can eat you know and you're in bondage to food at that point you can't you can't eat, I can't eat nuts I can't eat this I can't eat that well that was all set up by the demons mm -hmm. through kinesiology muscle testing or whatever else. Um, just remember the Bible says that we can eat everything as long as we give thanks for it, right? Yes. And it's sanctified yes. by, the, by Jesus Christ. So yes. just remember that. Don't get caught into the Hebrew root stuff right. where you can't, you know, you go into hell if you eat popcorn shrimp. Not going to happen. <laughs> so, so just remember that stuff. Yeah, that was the muscle testing. Um, and then here's how I fell into this uh, cult that I was in. It was called Pranic Healing, and they're based out of uh, California. Um, pranic Healing. Pranic Healing. Pranic. Yeah, Pranic Healing. Prana means energy, life force. That's where they get that from. So that's, uh, they use that, that term for like universal, uh, like, uh, universal energy, is that, but it's basically the Kundalini energy. Mm -hmm. They're using the Kundalini energy. If if there's any if there's an energy that you can use, it's demonic. You can't use the Holy Spirit. Nobody uses the Holy Spirit, right? right. We pray and we cast demons out, and the Holy Spirit does this thing. We don't use the Holy Spirit. So this energy that they're using is the Kundalini spirit. It's the false Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. right? So so that's what that prana is. Pranic healing, energy healing. Uh, they call it ray um, for for our key energy. That's where you get the the word Reiki from. Uh, Reiki healing is similar to what I was into, but they would say that the pranic healing was on another level. Remember, they were the demons were te teaching me that I was super enlightened and that I had all these different incarnations, so I needed something special, you know. Mm -hmm. So this pranic healing, that's I, I watched a video. Um, 
of this guy doing a crystal healing, this guy named Stephen Cole. And all of a sudden, when I, he was doing it, something entered into me. And I don't remember what, I, I, how I felt, but I just felt like energized and uh, like I had, like this thing had to go find out what this guy was doing. So that's when I was like, okay, I got it. This is, this is it. This is my life journey. I got to do this. I got to do all this stuff. And I didn't know it was a demon doing that at that point. I didn't know about demons. So then I, I looked around they had this center close to us, probably maybe 30 minutes away. And they were doing like these meditations every week and stuff. So I got into this group meditation with these people and then they, they got me into product healing level one, like probably like a week later. And it all, the, the demons set the whole thing up. So I got right into it and hook, line, and sinker. And, and they talked about Jesus there. They talked about him, how he was an energy healer. They'd have these pictures of him. And, and you know, you can call on Jesus too if you want, as long as you call on the guru first. And so I know this would be hard to believe, but I did have a guru. I had a guru. I had a, a um, his name, I mean, he was, he even called himself a grandmaster. It wasn't good enough to just be a master. It was, a, it was grandmaster uh, Choa Karksui was his name. He wasn't living at the point um, when I got into the, to it. But I'm telling you, these people were, I never cried or anything, but when you go to these events and they would see his picture, they would start weeping like we do for Jesus. These people would weep over this man. And he was an idol. So, but I didn't know anything about, I didn't know anything about the Bible. You know, I, I remember the demons had me tricked. I don't, I'm, I'm ahead of the Bible. They, they would teach that the Christians were low level spirituality. Like you didn't know enough, you, you didn't know anything. So that's, that's why they would say it was hard for a Christian to go into India and do anything. Because the Indian, they're looking for a higher level spirituality, so the Christians couldn't go in there because they looked at them as a lower, lower grade, right? That's why it's so hard to get into India, and they're so abrasive against uh, Christianity. They hate it. Uh, the you know, the Hindus here are are lovey dovey. Over in India, they'll they'll burn your church down. It's 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 no joke over there. So, so I get into. Uh, I get into this and then I'm just on this fast track. They've got me on this fast track, right? I start doing, I start learning about, um, I start learning about spirit, like mediums and stuff. I start learning about mediums and how they work. And then this lady that was tied in with the cult that I was in, she gave me a reading. Uh, free, they're always going to be free too. It's just like drugs. Uh, Hey, I give you a reading, and then she started talking to me about my marriage. And then she, you know, this is how the demons work. Hey, I see divorce in your future. I see divorce. Now, I didn't, I didn't take that, right? So if I would have said, oh, this lady is right, then the demons can come in and come after the marriage, and they destroy it quickly, right? I, I blocked that one. I was like, no. I said, I, I love my wife, we're gonna, you know, this and that and this, and, and uh, I didn't let that happen, but I just wanted to show you guys that how cunning that really is. If you take that in there, uh, Derek Prince talked about it one time, somebody came up and this lady was in the service, she goes, I see you dead wrapped around a tree in a car accident, and he said, nope, I reject that in Jesus' name. Now, if he would have said, wow, if he would have took that in and, and been fearful of it, now the demon's got the legal rights. You see how that works? Right. So we don't want to go to mediums. Uh, that stuff is all condemned in the Bible, right? It's all abominations. But I went to her. And one of the things that she told me was that I was going to go to the Arhatic Yoga. And uh, that to the Arhat means to become a god. Wow. So basically, you're going to go there. It's the Gnosticism. You're going to be able to learn how to become a god there. So I went there. One of the first things uh, that happened was I didn't have the money for it, but I, I knew I could manifest things. So they said, just write stuff down in red pen and face the east and, and say it out to the universe and it'll happen. Well, guess what? I did that and it happened. I got a check in the mail for that $1,600. You couldn't believe that somebody paid $1,600 to go to this trash, but I did it. But I looked at it like, hey, 
this thing was, the, the universe generated this money for me, I'm going. So the first time I went in there, the first thing that they do is they roll down a big tap, tapestry with Buddha on it, and they say, hey, you guys are all from the line of Buddha. That's, that's your lineage. So then this isn't jiving with me, hey, I'm, I'm kind of a Christian, I'm not reading my Bible, but I'm like, ah, how could I be from Buddha, you know? And I didn't know how to reconcile that at that point. But uh, I went there and it was like a, a whole retreat and they, and they taught us all this different stuff and it was just crazy stuff after crazy stuff. But that Buddha thing, and, that, and they were teaching too that Buddha was more enlightened than Jesus. So Jesus was on a lower plane. They said Buddha is the highest enlightened uh, to ever walk the face of the earth. And so then we just kept going into that. And then um, down the road, they, they, they were trying to make me into a teacher. So they were, they were putting me through teacher classes and stuff like that. And that's when stuff got it started getting real weird because I got into yoga there. They, they started teaching Kundalini yoga. And um, now yoga means to yoke, right? That, that word means to yoke, to, you, to be in union with Brahman, that's the, the, the deity that's over, uh, over the, uh, the Hindus. So that's the one that you're gonna be yoking up with through that, but they, they do something, they, they talk to you about something called your higher self. So this might be something too that you might run into with the people they think they really have a higher self and all this. So they did this in this class, they, they showed it, they had a, a pitcher of water they had a bunch of glasses and they said, here's your pitcher of water, this is your higher self. And dumping, they dumped a little bit of water into each cup and they said, these represent all your incarnations. And then they said, as soon as all these come back and they dump into the cup, now, now you're gonna get God consciousness. So you're gonna be completely, when you become one with your higher self, which is just a demon, now you're going to be able to have God consciousness and you're going to get moksha, that's uh, enlightenment. You're going to be enlightened. So they're all seeking for enlightenment, to be one with God, right? And we know that that's the only way is, is through Jesus Christ. Everyone else that comes in is a thief and a robber. So that's, 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 that's what happened to me. I got into that Arhatic Yoga, the, the Kundalini meditation, the Kundalini um, Yoga, and the meditations were getting bad, uh, starting to see all kinds of stuff. This is when I believe I was, I had, you know, I was starting, this is the, this was the praise God moment. The demon started to manifest in me, right? I don't know. I mean, I had my family praying for me. I had, uh, another guy was, uh, my childhood friend who had just got saved. He said the Lord was putting me on his heart to pray for me. And he said that Every time he prayed for me, he'd just start weeping. So he knew something was going on. Um, so he starts praying for me, and then this is the way the Lord did it. He allowed the demons to manifest. And right in, the, in this new age, they don't teach demons. So I didn't know demons were real. But all of a sudden, I've got these things talking through me and telling me how much they hate me and how much they want to kill me and how much they don't want to be alive anymore. They wish they could be dead. They can't be dead. Um, how they've been doing this for a long time, um, how they're going to kill my family, all these different things in my head. And then I didn't know, I didn't know how to deal with it, right? So then what am I doing? I'm asking these pranic healers to help me out too. Mm. The only one I could turn to. I didn't, I didn't know anybody else that knew anything, you know? So they were trying to do more healing on me. And this lady that was a high level witch came to try to do, um, chronic healing on me and and she kept praying to some I said pray to Jesus and she called him some different name and then I knew I, I started to know I was like at this point I knew something was wrong I knew something was wrong and then all of a sudden through everybody's prayers all of a sudden I knew Jesus Christ was Lord at that point wow. I knew he was God I, I didn't I didn't know how I knew it but I knew it so please pray for people Pray for people. Con continue to lift them up and say, Lord, grab a hold of their heart and bring them to Jesus Christ. They, they have to be drawn to Jesus. Something happened. There was a shift. 
And then all of a sudden I knew it and I knew it. I knew when this lady was praying for me and she wanted to use this different name. And I was like, oh, there's something wrong here. Something wrong. Well, it got worse after that. That's when I told you guys I was down to 160 pounds. I, you know, I had people that would run into me thought I had AIDS and stuff like that. I mean, they were just joking and, but it was bad. Couldn't eat anything. And for a while there, I, uh, I didn't know if I was, if I should just kill myself, you know? Um, so the demons were telling me that they were going to work through me to kill my children. So that's why they were telling me that it was, it was time to just, Hey, for your family, you might as well just kill yourself. But it, the problem with that at this point, I was seeing visions at night of hell and I seen it and I knew I had a knowing that if I just took my own life, I was going to just wake up right there and never be able to go out. So I had these visions and that was what was uh, saving me at that point. I remember some nights I'd sit at the end of the bed and I couldn't, I couldn't handle these demons in me, uh, not even one more second, but then if I went to sleep, then I'd see visions of hell. So I didn't, I had to just kind of stay up the whole time. And I mean, I'm just thinking that that's why I have a place like this to go to. Like if I would have had that right up the street and somebody would have said, Hey, you can be delivered. I would have did it in a heartbeat, you know? So that's what these demons were telling me. Hey, you know, this and that, and the sun's not going to come up, you know, this, this, all these different lies. And I didn't know how to decide. I didn't know how to take thoughts captive. That wasn't given to me. I didn't have that scripture yet. So I just thought this was the way it was. And, and, um, it was bad and got, kept getting worse and worse until one day, my wife asked me on Christmas Eve in 2014, um, she said, hey, will you go to Christmas, will you go to service with us, you know, for Christmas? And uh, prior to that, I hadn't been able to leave, I mean, not even leave the house, but not even leave the room, you know, I'd just leave to maybe go to the bathroom or something. I was so tormented, you know, at that point, when she said that to me, I said, yes, I'll go. And it was like, I don't know. It was like the whole thing was divinely orchestrated. I went there. <clears throat> and the, the same pastor that gave me that prophetic word was up there preaching. And when they were playing like Silent Night and stuff, I started weeping. And uh, afterwards, I went up to him and I said, hey, man, I, I, don't, I couldn't even explain this to you in the least bit. But uh, I'm going through a lot right now and I need you to pray for me. And I don't remember what he prayed. I don't remember at all. But he said, Jesus is in your heart and he touched my heart and all the demons left. Not all of them, but I mean, the ones, the, the big ones that were tormenting me came out and I got filled with the Holy Spirit. So that's it in a nutshell. I mean, for that, I mean, it was, it was I had hope at that point, you know, I had hope. I, I still had to take my thoughts captive, but now I had the Holy Spirit telling me, showing me these things. This is how you take your thoughts captive. This is it. And I would sit in the room and just take these thoughts captive. I had these full blown schizophrenia demons, but they were, they were coming out because I wasn't, I wasn't buying the lies. I wasn't buying the lies anymore. And I just kept taking them captive and, and the Holy Spirit would just, you know, give me scriptures and, and I'd get convicted on certain things that no more doing this, no more doing that. Uh, took the alcohol away, took everything away. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't drink a half a beer without getting sick anymore. You know, I mean, the Holy Spirit just took me, you know, and like I said, if I would have had a place like this, you know, where somebody could come alongside me through this, it would have been, it would have been amazing, you know, so, um, and, and there is constant deliverance. I, I did a lot of practices, you know, tarot cards. I mean, just the whole gamut, they just, they go right down the line. They get you in this, they get you in that, they get you in this. So I, I picked up a lot of different spirits over the years. But this, this uh, deliverance process has been great for me. Um, this place has helped me out a lot. The one thing that you do pick up through the, uh, the New Age is the spiritual pride. You will pick that up and it's as big as a bus when it comes in. Because like I said, they're trying to tell you, you are better than everybody else. You are more enlightened. You are an old soul. 
you know, these types of terms. So uh, the first time I came here a few years ago, uh, Peter Venezuela was preaching and I just felt all kinds of shackles just loosen when, when he was just preaching. It wasn't even, it wasn't even any prayer part yet, right? right? But afterwards he comes right at me and I said, man, I got to get rid of this pride, you know, and he started praying with me and I, I mean, I was just, just coming out in, in droves. I mean, so this has been a continued process, you know, and, and that's something that I think ministers are going to be battling with for a while, you know, and, and you just got to keep home on yourself. But that, that was something, you know, that, like I said, those big monsters came out of me. He, he took out what needed to come out, and I went from wanting to kill myself to having been filled with hope and joy and peace and love. Everything looked brighter. I, could, I, I went to go like pick my daughters up from school and I would just start weeping and watching them play with their friends. And I would just listen to uh, Christian music and just weep and weep and weep. And he was just showing me through my whole life of how he was, he was there the whole time and I couldn't see him, you know? So, yeah. So, I mean, hopefully that kind of helps, uh, helps you guys, you know, explain when you, when you guys see these, please have empathy for them. Don't look at them. Don't let the de don't let the devils kind of portray these new agers as kind of like kooks or something, right? Because mm -hmm. guess what? I fell into it, and um, it can happen to anybody. So that's that's pretty much all I had. And, and I know a lot of you guys came for prayer. If anybody has any questions, I'd love to answer them. Um, I ran into someone. Uh, in a store, and it, they were talking about doing manifestations. Was that a piece of your manifesting? Yeah. Manifesting, yeah. That's that's what the secret is. That's all that stuff. So you manifest, you put it out to the universe, and then, and like I said, it works. It's just, it's it's a demonic power that makes this stuff happen, right? And it's all self-seeking too. Mm -hmm. Watch out for manifestations because it's all self-seeking. Mm -hmm. You know, you you'll you'll wallpaper your 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 room with your pictures of hundred dollar bills and stuff. It's all for the self, right? Mm -hmm. Just stay away from that stuff. Thank you. That's a good question, though. Yeah, yeah go ahead. So I have a friend who is, talks about that all the time. She's a born again Christian. How do I minister to her? She she's uh, born again, but she's. Dabbling in the new age. Manifesting. She talks about the universe and things. Yeah, she's got. She's a mixed bag then. Yeah. She's a mixed bag. Or you got to ask her the tough question. This is a question that no, most people never want to ask anybody. Are you born again? Okay. Are you born again? And then have them explain to you what, what happened when they got born again. When I got born again, there was no doubt about it. There was everything changed. My eyes. I mean, all of a sudden now. I mean, there was like. The, the trees look brighter, everything looked brighter, everybody smiled. I had no beef with anybody. I, didn't, I, didn't, I, I, I just knew I came out of darkness and I was a wretched sinner and, and going to hell and I got pulled out of it. That was a change. If she didn't have that, then there's something wrong there. She might be thinking she's spirit filled, but she might not. Or she's a mixed bag, which a lot of people are. There's a lot of people, I was talking to some of the women before at the prayer meeting, there isn't anybody up teaching this stuff in the churches, right? So that's a problem. So if you go to some of these churches and never know about certain pitfalls of the new age or traps of it, how are you going to know? So she might have just, you know, bought the book of the secret or something or, you know, and then she's, she's doing it. So you just, you just got to keep praying for her and then keep giving her scriptures. And then... If she is born again... Like she says she is. I would start there. I would start there, and then and then you can just send her testimonies of people coming out of that, watching the secret and all the manifestation stuff, okay. and then just give it to the Holy Ghost. Okay. You know, that's all you got to do. He'll he'll convict her. Uh, we don't we don't do the convicting. You know, <laughs> none of us can do the convicting. We just give scriptures. We give uh, tes testimonies are powerful. Okay. Testimonies will really, in actuality, uh, 
because a lot of times it's the same thing people are in. You know, they're like, oh. You're praying for discernment. Yeah. Yep. Pray for discernment. Yep. That the gift gift of discerning of spirits. I believe is the most important gift we can get. Right. Uh, especially even with deliverance, if if you come here and Jennifer's praying with you for two hours and then you go out and get tricked to, to you know, and you fill them back up, yeah, now they're back worse. So if you don't have the discerning of spirits where you can see behind it, right, that's, it says that in the Bible that once, once you start becoming more of a, a, a Christian that, that, can, that can eat meat instead of drinking the milk, one of the things that happens there is that you're able to discern good from evil. So if you don't have that, you're just going to keep falling into these traps. And the demons are just laughing at you the whole time. Well, we'll, we'll they'd say with her, you know, oh, we'll get it. if she gets away from the manifestations, we'll hit her with the acupuncture, mm. you know, and we'll load her up with that. I mean, I've heard people say that the acupuncture demons were the worst ones they ever dealt with. These occult demons are the worst. I'm telling you, yeah. David Wilkerson said, uh, Somebody coming out of the occult, the the stuff that comes out of them and the, uh, the, the just the, the the demeanor is nothing compared to uh, anything else. Not even heroin addicts. They said the withdrawals from the occult is way worse, way worse because you're getting filled with this false Holy Spirit, and it's giving you feelings of euphoria that you can't even express, and they think it's God. I thought it was God when I was doing yoga, meditation, and kundalini. I thought it was God. So when they, you know, the hardest people, I'm sure anybody that's done deliverance, the hardest people to get through to is the people that are filled with kundalini to let them know. Right. Hey, you got the kundalini spirit. Go ahead. Can I share a little, I, I resonate so much with your testimony. It's probably about 75% as much into the new age as you. And one thing, I think it's even hard for Christians to discern how deceptive these spirits are. Because one time I, um, I ate an edible, yeah. a marijuana edible, and then I wrote out this poem. And I even had Christians tell me it's anointed. But I wasn't a Christian at the time, and I wasn't giving glory to Jesus in this poem. So I think like it can sound really good and it can kind of seem like the truth or a truth. Yeah. But um, it, it took me quite a while to get to that point of eating the meat of the word and not just the milk. Yeah. So you need, you need places that are going to teach you spiritual warfare. The higher level teachings, you know, uh, apologetics, stuff like that. You got to get fed with that. Not just... I mean, America needs another regular sermon. Like they need, you know, they they need a, a kick in the face. You know, they need they need to learn stuff. You know, so by learning and getting uh, grounded in the deeper teachings and how the enemy. We don't want to ever glorify Satan, but we always want to make sure that we know that hey, he is a powerful being and he does use deception for us. You know, so that's the thing. You brought up the edibles. I'm glad she brought that up. One of the other things you can't get out of in the new age is the psychedelics. Mm. The psychedelics and the drugs, are, it's tied in. They'll use DMT to get into the, uh, the spirit realm. They'll use ayahuasca. They'll go out to these ayahuasca places. You want to get filled up with demons, do the ayahuasca. Um, you know, mushrooms, acid, meth. You smoke meth, you're going to see spirit beings. You're going to see spirit. I know a guy that smoked meth and seen beings come right out of a TV that wasn't even on. Two white beings climbed out of the TV and walked right by him. Mm -hmm. So you get opened up to the spirit realm through these, these things. And the edibles are no joke. I just prayed with a gal on the phone the other day that she took one edible. She, was, she didn't even have a big rap sheet, nothing at all. She took one edible and almost died. Wow. wow. That's how powerful those are. Were Stay there people taking them for medical reasons? That's what I would say. I would go to the Holy Ghost instead. That's what I would, yeah. Uh, Rick Cat said that he had cast, he had, he had cast a, a CBD oil a demon out of somebody. Those things are, it's no joke. I'd steer clear of that stuff, right? That's another thing with the New Age. They, they pull in all these, 
you know, if you, health benefits of it, right? If you eat an apricot seed, you're going to be healed from this. Then, then you turn food into your God instead of going to the Holy Ghost, right? We talked a little bit about the essential oils. That's embedded into it too. Watch out with that. Now, I'm not saying there isn't healing properties in essential oils, but you give glory to God, right? Not the essential oil. So, yeah, and then when they make these essential oils, they'll infuse them together and call it bliss or love or this. Yeah, that's all, that's all witchcraft. See, when I, with those essential oils, I found out recently, too, that the, a lot of the people in the upper, like, well, if you don't go down the line, corporate ladder, right? right are all You're talking about like uh, Young Living? Yes. Yeah. Young Living, what's the other big one, they're Teresa? More, they're more. They're, but they're like New Agers. They're yeah. In, in witches. doTERRA, New Age witches on top too. Yeah. New Age witches on top of... Uh, I kept seeing people that were infected. Right. Using young them. Living, watch out. I had to get rid of all my Young Living yeah. stuff. Watch out yeah. for that. They, they are, they're New Agers on top. No, I'm not going to get too dogmatic on this. Like I said, if you like the smell of the stuff, but don't don't get don't get too 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 embedded into these things see i was into my health and and i give all the glory to god because it's like he is the creator yeah. of it all i grew up that way but um when i met my husband before when we were dating and stuff is then meeting his sister and his sister is been a new age hippie she has witchcraft books on her shelf she um casting spells she was into the cloak, and she wears the Harry Potter glass, and all this and that. Well, now she's moved, um, and she's, what, 75? And somebody that, when she moved into this house, I keep praying for her and everything, and she's, like, one time she was over, and she's like, you think I'm a bad witch? Like, like I drink blood or something, and, and she got very offensive, and, you know, she'll go to church and stuff with when we had holidays. But when she moved, anyway, the, these people, this guy that was doing some handiwork, he started ministering. Oh, wow. So she told us that she accepted Christ. Oh, yeah. But yet I tried to... You know, ask her about going. I mean, the biggest thing is, is that if you accept Christ, yeah. those demons are going to come back tenfold, and she doesn't have anybody discipling her, and she yeah. won't. Yeah. And um, she's still into. Ask her if she got born again. That's what you got to ask her. Yeah. Because if she just said a sinner's prayer, that's a lot of times that's she's a deception. Kind of Catholic, she said. Yeah. See. And so now she's no. Into just yeah. Else. So I would ask her if she got born again and pray for her to get born again. I mean, you'll be surprised. They'll, they'll receive the Holy Spirit. They'll get born again. They'll have a changed life. And then don't expect everything to just, like, all of a sudden she's throwing all her doTERRA stuff out, all this no, stuff. She has all her, crystals. Yeah, she, she just Buddha. give it some time. It took me a little bit. It took me a little bit to get all my crystals and all that stuff into a box, and then I chucked them all, right? The best thing to do is burn them, but I didn't, I didn't do that. I just threw them all away. But when I did that, I felt like this incredible presence leave, and I felt free from that. Like these occult books, we were ministering, Teresa and I were ministering to a lady that she was coming to our Bible study every week. She could not get rid of these occult books. We asked her, we had probably eight different women trying to minister to her, hey, it's time to get rid of those occult books. Oh, well, they're too much money. It's too much money. I can't do it. You know, I, I, how about I give them away? I'm like, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. You know, and then eventually she just wax cold. Mm -hmm. So eventually what's going to happen is the Holy Spirit will start convicting her once she gets born again, and then she'll start getting rid of the stuff. But you have to have the Holy Spirit in you to convict you. If she's never had that heart cry, that conviction, she's not born again. She's just said a prayer. Go ahead, Teresa. I think there's a grace period, too. Yeah. I was not expecting us to get it all figured out right away, but eventually we have to start making some decisions. We can't keep one foot in the world. And, yeah. And I think another point that you brought up that was good is that a lot of those things, all like the, the New Age stuff, there is an element that intrigues people, like of, of love and kindness and, you know, all those types of things. Self-care, you want to take good care of yourself. So that's what intrigues people is if they don't know Jesus, they're look, we're all searching for something, right? So it's like whatever can catch them the quickest. 
And there's this element that Satan uses to say, oh, this is good, look, it's love, it's, you know, you're shifting energy, all these different things. And the other good thing that you brought up is that all the things you were trying to manifest were happening. Yeah. I mean, we were, Matt, we owned a very awesome. successful business and we were, Mike was doing, we'd get employees in there and he could tell, he was getting visions of their past and if they were going to be good employees and we were manifesting, our business went from like nothing to insanity because we were putting crystals around the uh, Yeah, the crystal balls. So then it's it's just that it's hard to, for, Satan knows that it's hard for you to wrap your brain around, well, why is this happening then, you know? so. There's all these, these ways that Satan works to trick you. Yeah, he gives you what you want. There was a guy named Stephen Bancars. If you guys want to know a good guy that came out of the New Age, his name is Stephen Bancars. His uh, website is Reasons for Jesus. Very, very knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable. He was, he was a writer for the, it's called Spirit Science, is the biggest uh, YouTube channel on the planet for that. He was a writer for that. He was making f over $40,000 a month on YouTube revenue for that. You talk about manifestation, he thought I was manifesting this money, right? And then and then en ended up where he, he found out it was just the same thing. He found out, hey, none of this is bringing me happiness. What's going on? His mom was a Christian and said, hey, you ready to give your life to Jesus yet? And he did. And then he, he gave that whole life up. He went from having 40000 50000 a month to no money. He had to move back in with mom, but he said it was all worth it. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of stuff. He'll give us exactly what Jesus was offered on the mountain, right, from Satan. He'll, he'll give us the world if we forfeit our souls. So, yeah, go ahead. I have a question. I'm in... Um, and I understand about healing crystals and crystals being used for that and dowsing and everything, but what about big stones, crystals, that are decorative? You know, if there's no, no I, I, it's, here's the thing with this, the, from us going into these crystal shops, they were swanky. There was something wrong with them. There were, it just, it felt nasty in there. And even when I was in the new age, you know, there's something wrong there. I think that these things get, prayed over before they come into the shops, right? So even though you go there and you say, oh, I have no intentions, I just like the way it looks, there might be a curse on that thing. It's risky. Oh, man. It's risky, but I don't want to, like I said, now if you just have certain things and this and that, there's no meaning behind it, I, I don't know. I don't think there's anything wrong with it in and of itself, but like I said, sometimes that stuff's risky. I, it's not. Oh, it's yeah. not. It's not for me. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't have like a... A big, you know, whatever amethyst in my house. I'm not gonna do it. Right. I mean, but but before when I would do that, I'd have like a garnet stone. This garnet is gonna bring me prosperity. This this is gonna bring me this. Well, as long as, long as you're not doing that, it's it's better, but it's just risky because we don't know where they came from, right? No, I want him, right? Yeah, you just want him, right? So okay. yeah, do you have yeah. some? I felt uh, really similar because I have a neighbor who's really into the new age. And she gave me an amethyst. And I said to God, I know you created this, and I'm not you know, tying any faith to it. I just want to accept the gift with you know, sincere gratitude. And I had it up on my shelf for months and, um, and didn't think much about it. But another time, she gave me another gift, which was like a chakra balancing bracelet. And I immediately threw that out. And I just sort of felt that the Holy Spirit was convicting me to throw out the other crystal, too. And I just feel like maybe yeah. there's a temptation from the devil to open you to compromise, mm. at least in my situation. Yeah, absolutely. That, that was probably a witch that yeah, gave that to you. Watch out what you take in for gifts, right? right? Angel knows that stuff. She came out of witchcraft and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, she's you? real She's real knowledgeable in the occult as well. Oh, wow. I would give them. Wow. You give, you give them stuff, and that stuff is, is they, yeah, this, that, that guy that was running pranic healing, they uh, embedded a bunch of demons into my. I, they said it was blessed, but it was cursed. But that wow. was the the healing wand that I was using, and all these demons just get charged into these people uh, through that. She brought up chakras too. I, I didn't bring up chakras. Now that that system is part of the yoga system. Now when you start doing meditation on your different chakra systems, uh, now you're inviting these demons in. These each one of these chakras is. Uh, tied into a different glandular system on your body. Mm -hmm. 
So, so say they want to uh, focus on their throat chakra, right? Uh, now they, they'll do these things called like binaural beats or, or whatever ways. They'll do meditations to, to st and then all of a sudden all these demons come into your throat. Well, now they're, they're hitting that, uh, what, what's, what is it? The uh, thyroid. They come into your thyroid. Now you got all kinds of autoimmune. You got all kinds of problems that you can't get rid of. And then the same with the third, they, they call it the third eye, you'll get these demons in there. You start doing that, now you, you talk about you can't stop seeing the spirit world. So you're getting demonic visions like I had in my house. Before all that stuff was going on, I had so many demons that were just messing with me in the house. They would pick my uh, wallet up and put it on the other side of the room. They would do all this crazy stuff. But my kids and my wife, nothing. You see that? You see how poltergeist demons work? They work with the demons inside of you and then the ones outside of you. Not saying that those weren't there, but sh they weren't affecting her. It was so uh, it was so bad one time I tried. This was kind of funny. Looking back, wasn't funny at the time, but I'm trying to do an exorcism on myself. And the only reason I knew that they were demons is because I watched the movie The Exorcist and, and all of a sudden I'm trying to cast these things out of myself, but I'm using the name of the guru, right? <laughs> and, and then I would still put like tack on Jesus afterwards and these things were mocking me. They were talking through me with women's voices. It was, it was horrible. And then all of a sudden Teresa comes in and she looks at me. She had my youngest daughter Presley with her. She looked at me, she goes, what are you doing? And I said, I said, I'm trying to trying to get these exercises in the shoes. She didn't know what was going on, and all of a sudden, but yeah, that's what that's what was next, right? So talk about wanting to, if 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 we would have had a Arizona Deliverance Center next, she would have been like, hey, I got a place for you, right? But we didn't have that. We didn't know nothing about deliverance, nothing. So so, but one of the things was I. I had, uh, these things were mocking me. Of course, they're not going to come out without the name of Jesus. Uh, they were mocking me. And then as soon as they left, like Presley looked at me and then she had like these little sunglasses on and she smiled. And then for some reason I was like, I, I just felt like everything was going to be all right at that point. I don't know why. It's like the Lord just like used her to give me some hope at that point, you know, but it was, it was kind of crazy. Go ahead. How did you find Arizona I found that uh, through uh, Shannon Ray Davis on um, Facebook, Omega the Man. Omega Man, yeah, Omega Man. You know, I'm, I'm not all about everything that he teaches, but he does have a, a great following. Uh, Brother Mike does great stuff through, through that um, ministry he does. It's all about just connecting. He just has different, different teachers come on there for the uh, podcast and stuff that he does. And they're live, so I, I liked it. I, I heard... Uh, Brother Mike did a teaching on there, and then I was like, "Oh wow, that's that's that sounds good." And then I I joined on to Hardcore Christianity on the Facebook group, and then all that. So that's kind of how I got connected right there. So going back to like to, uh, we had Kachina doll that was given to us. Oh yeah, those are highly big, demonic. Big yeah. beautiful glass case. Yeah. Full on. Yeah. Uh, hundreds of dollars. Yeah. And um, we had it. We had the Kachina dolls, but it, I mean, I grew up, I just knew that that was Indian, and it, yeah, they have their thought process, but in yeah. time, just got rid of it. And yeah. You know what, uh, it's interesting, this story with uh, Derek Prince got given four tapestries, they were all dragons, uh -huh. and these were worth like thousands and thousands of dollars, but they were four dragons that were left to him through family inheritance. He didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings, he took them in, put them up. And the Lord said, what does the dragon represent? And he said, Satan. And he said, what do you have that in your house for? And all of a sudden, he just was obedient. He took him down, got rid of him. He said his finances doubled the next year. It didn't do anything different. His finances doubled. So these things, watch out what you're taking in. And don't be afraid to offend somebody if they want to give you a gift. Or you just chuck it behind them. And if they come back, hey, I, got to, I had to get If they ask you if the demons do that, Hey, where's my Kachina doll? I said, hey, I, 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 I don't like it. I had to get rid of it. I'm sorry, don't lie, but yeah, well, yeah, I changed the theme or not? Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah. Now we're beach theme in the house. Didn't go good with it. <laughs> right. Right. Hey, I wa Yeah, give them a YouTube video. I watched a YouTube video on how demonic kachina dolls were. Then, you know, their their house is probably loaded with them. Yeah, go ahead. So my my stepmother, you know, she passed away a couple a month and a half ago. Super into the kachina stuff, and um, so at Christmas time, my daughter opens this present from her, and it's this huge kachina. It's like the grandmother kachina. Yeah. And those things are like deified family spirits, is what they represent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at this point, my stepmom's dying. I tried for years to try to kind of back her out of all this stuff, but I just let it go. But I just put that thing, I mean, it was worth hundreds of dollars. It was handmade, intricate, you know. Yeah. It went in my trunk and it went right to the top. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. I was like, oh, my daughter doesn't notice it's gone. She never noticed it. Oh. But I mean, we just can't do it. Yeah, you and can't. It's dangerous. That, you know, and my, I'll just give a little testimony. My stepmother, she was my, since I was a kid, she's been married to my dad. But she always had these really, really bad health problems. But she was always bringing this stuff in the house, like the Kachina dolls. All of this, um, she had like one room with like Buddhas in there, another one with the Hindu stuff in there. I mean, I try to tell my dad, I'm like, you guys are, he would see shadow figures at night standing over him, you know, like night stalkers. And yeah. I try to explain, yeah, this is how demons, you're bringing these demons into the house. Yeah. Hey, shut up, I don't believe in that stuff. But anyway, and they're like health fanatics. My parents were like, you know, all organic. They yeah, that's out. new age. Yep. My, you know, my stepmom's dying of cancer. She's still at the gym every day. Like really healthy people. I could never figure out why she was so plagued with infirmity after yeah. infirmity after infirmity. But, uh, you know, took her life. And yeah. I think it had something to do with all that stuff. I mean, the whole house, you know, like a 4,000 square foot home. Hmm. Bloated with this stuff. Oh, know, so. yeah. It was a shame, you know, but it's it's true. So after she passed, you know, I kind of went through, because my dad, he's kind of, you know, not very observant. And I just started chucking Chuck it. Chuck it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dad, 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 I got to get a third. Yeah. Yeah, right on it. But, uh, She's like, hey, Jennifer, why do you got that 30-yard dumpster in front of the house? <laughs> yeah. Let's get him out a little at a time. I've already started. He hasn't noticed yet. Yeah. But it's serious. That get that stuff out slowly but surely, yeah. but don't. You can you can wreak havoc on your household if you do it too fast. You know, uh, Presley, uh, my youngest daughter, came up to me and actually was you know, hey, we got to do something about these scary movies in the house. You know, and wow. and she came up to me and I was like, all right, let's get rid of them. You know, I never watched scary movies. I was always a comedy guy, and we got rid of them, and the whole house changed. Mm -hmm. The whole atmosphere of the house changed so get ready getting rid of one demonic item can change your whole everything the whole atmosphere in there just just remember that uh but if you push too fast you're going to push people away you know what i mean they've got sometimes they get bigger fish to fry than the fact that they've got a, a kachina doll in the house right they're dead in their sins and they're oh, yeah. you, you know He's, the thing that i realized too is like trying to minister in that way about the demonic when they can't even receive right. Christ, it's yeah. not that it's not going to work, right? I, I I've done that too. Yeah, right. I've tried to talk to people about the Masons who weren't saved. They were looking at me like I was crazy. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't work. I tried. I learned the hard way, right? Through yeah, like how how are they going to buy this stuff? Right. If they can't even receive Christ, yes. Correct. So work on Christ. And right, and it even says that the natural man can't even understand yeah, exactly. the things of the spirit. Yeah, right. I will get irate if I even like at one point I said, "Oh, mental illness, you know, demonic." What? Yeah. Like his demons got really right. Off. So. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. You know, it's a little bit out of time. Yeah. Um, thanks. Kind of a question and uh, idea is that I do a lot of um, house sitting in my business for people, and um, I'm wondering like. Like, I use it as an outreach as well, and I use it as information. Like, if I see dream catchers, or if I see maybe some things from Africa or whatever, um, I'm just praying, like, should I not work for them, or can I use it as information, you know? Well, you're not going to get affected by them unless you've got open doors. Right. So you're not going to go in there and get all Sometimes scared, right? Food is around. <laughs> yeah. So, I would just, yeah, I would just leave the stuff alone, but just, you know, just, just Lord, just thank the Lord for your protection yeah. and then just work on your open doors, right? right? It can become an open door for you if you're worried about every time you walk into Walmart and you cross a witch, you're going to pick spirits up. Yeah. That's the open door. The fear of, 
yeah. picking up spirits, transfers. People people are crazy with well, that people stuff. People warn me, but I honestly don't have fear. Like, yeah. like I, I use it as information. Like, I know kind of where they're from. I look at what books they read, and I always leave, like, certain different cards when there I'm you go. And then yeah. I say, oh, I wanted to go to that concert or whatever, if that's a Christian concert. Yeah. Like, I just use it as a way to reach There's out. There's probably somebody, too, like, you're the one that actually brings it in the home, right? Because I know with my stepmom, she was so inundated with illness and infirmity. My dad, perfect help. Yeah, like but it was her bringing the stuff. He, she is the one that brought the curse yeah, in the house. Yeah. You see she, that? It was affecting her. Right. Him. So and and here's it. the thing with the food thing, right? You brought that up. That's big because she probably had this super organic, clean diet. But unless you deal with the sin problem, you can't get healed. Yeah. Right? So that's the problem that, that takes away from the sin. You know, that's the, that's the root of it most of the time. So go ahead, Pat. And you didn't bring up, but um, ladies, especially the birthstones. Yeah, the birthstones, yeah, watch out for that stuff. That's tied in with astrology. What? The birthstones. Birthstones, Birth Stones, it's all tied in with astrology. Yeah. yeah, earth astrology and all that stuff. Just watch out. Just When somebody wants to give you a birthstone, just, or, or they ask you what you're astrology sign is just say hey, I'm the blood of Jesus you know yeah. that's my sign it's the blood of Jesus so yeah don't get into the birthstones just yeah just some of that stuff's risky you don't especially when you guys are trying to get the demons out of you and you're trying to push this thing forward you don't want any extra heat on you right now go ahead I think like you said in our household sometimes we don't know if you're questioning just just chuck it forget it yeah, that's yeah. Great. Good rule of thumb. just get rid of it but you can also get crazy, right? Think like, oh, I got a cold. What's missing in my house? You know, you can't do that kind of stuff. Right. But, but there is the more, the further in our walk we get, there's a, a higher level of accountability. So if we're feeling convicted, like, sure. well, I don't know, like you mentioned, like I don't know if I should throw that out. Probably just right. Just chuck it. Ask. Right. Yeah. The uh, religious demons will will kill you in this battle too. You know, the the religious demons will tell you that. You know, you can't eat this, you can't eat that, you can't eat this, you can't have this, all this stuff. Just if the Holy Spirit convicts you on it, just get rid of it, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you know, I'll, some people don't like the uh, those crucifix. Get the crucifixes out of there. You know, you don't want something with a dead Jesus on it. You know, just just go through your house, and when the Holy Spirit's dealing with you on it, just just get rid of it. That's the best thing you can do. It's not worth. It's not worth it. Remember, our lives are so short. It's like a vapor, right, in, in the book of James. Just get rid of this stuff. We're talking about eternal life. Yeah. Eternal life is hard to grasp, but uh, remember, it's an endless sea of eternal life with living water being with Jesus. None of this stuff is worth any of that. None of it. Just get rid of it, right? So. Yeah, there's a couple of scriptures that came to mind when you said that. Is, um, I remember like when Eve ate the fruit in the garden, it looked appealing to her. Right. And then also when in Deuteronomy, when Moses was preaching to the people, he said, don't keep any of the idols yeah. or the carved images from the people you defeat. Even mm-hmm. if it has silver and gold in it, just burn it. Burn it, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, if you bring in something, you, you become the curse, right? The objects in and of, in and of itself don't have any power it's the we know the demons behind it right yeah, right so we can't bring any cursed items in there in and of itself it doesn't have any power right so like i don't get scared to get, like my sir i should film my parents house someday for you it's loaded with stuff but i don't get scared going in there right you're not I'm picking up the blood of Jesus. right i don't feel like i've ever picked up any transfer spirits there i'm not scared of that but for them that's different right they're infected they're infected they're the stuff in there right mm-hmm. So your dad's really on the hook too because he's the head of the household right, right? so sure. when i bring stuff to Teresa, we come together as a unit right as a husband and wife hey holy spirit's convicted me on this here's the scriptures let's get rid of it or change it or change this so it's not like i'm forcing her to do something i'm doing this and that that you you want to wreck your marriage that's how you do that but as of him being the head of the household he should have been like hey we got to get rid of these Buddhists that you got altars going on in different rooms and Hindu gods and statues. Oh, we got to get this out of there. So he's the one on the hook for it. So, uh, anybody else got any questions or should we pray?
So if you guys are getting convicted out of any of this stuff uh, today, just, just repent to the Lord. Um, it be a good time to do that. I know this stuff is embedded in, in a lot of people, like we said, we, a lot of people don't even realize it. So, Father God, I thank you again for what you did for me, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for pulling me out of the pit so I can now expose this, Lord, like Ephesians 5.11 says, Lord. I pray that you uh, bring that to everybody else to be able to expose this as well, Lord. But we just we just want to repent for all this stuff we got into, Lord. All this Reiki healing, Lord. All this all this occult stuff. We just we just lay it at your feet, Lord. We're so sorry, Lord. We're so sorry, Lord. We we're gonna get rid of all these things. Anything that we got convicted of today, Lord. If we got if we got statues in our house, sun gods, Lord. We're gonna get rid of them, Lord. We're going to get them out of our house. We know that they have power behind them, and we, we don't want it into our house, Lord. We're so sorry. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy on us for the, for the, for the deceptions we fell into, Lord. We didn't listen to your Holy Ghost. We, we listened to ourselves, Lord. Sorry for trying to manifest stuff. Sorry for being self-seeking, Lord. Sorry for being prideful. We lay this pride down at you, Lord. We lay it at your feet, Lord. We lay it at your feet, Lord. We renounce everything in the occult. We renounce it, Lord. We renounce the occult in the whole thing. All the deities, everything, Lord. We renounce it. We're not going back, Lord. We're going to ask our brothers and sisters in Christ what they think about it. If we're unsure, we're just going to, we're going to not, we're going to not do it. We're not going to step into it anymore, Lord. So sorry. So sorry, Lord. And if there's anybody that we've, uh, we're having a hard time forgiving, Lord, we forgive them right now. In Jesus name, Lord, help us to forgive. The Bible says if we don't forgive, we're not going to be forgiven. So, Lord, we just, we just forgive everyone that's ever wronged us or harmed us, Lord. We forgive them right now. Anybody that you're bringing to our attention right now, we forgive them, Lord. We pray blessings over them. We pray blessings over them, Lord. We pray blessings over them, Lord. We just break any of these curses off that came in through the occult right now. In Jesus' name, we break any of these curses off for bringing these occult objects into our house, Lord for going to fortune tellers. We just break any of these curses off right now in Jesus name, Lord. All right, so if anybody wants any prayer, come all the way up. The prayer team will come and help. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And if you, you can still receive prayer in your seats as well. Um, what stuff? What stuff were you dealing with? Uh, with everything the, and more than your list. Every, everything. Everything okay. and more. I mean, I've been out of it now, and I'm been yeah, cleaning up. Forward, okay. But everything. Okay. You know, All right. I repent, man. Yeah. I've nice been man. repenting. Okay. But more. Okay. Gurus. Right. Gurus. Okay. Oh, all yeah. of the ones you named and more. All right. All the New Age spirits, come out of everyone in this room right now in Jesus' name. Come out right now. All the New Age spirits, come out of the body right now in Jesus' name. Come out of their New Age spirits, come up and out right now in Jesus' name. The New Age guru spirits, come out of the body right now. Ascended masters, come out right now in Jesus' name. Ascended masters, come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out of the body right now. Ascended masters, come up and out right now in Jesus' name. Come out of the body right now. Come out of the body right now. All those ascended masters, come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out of the body right now. Come out of the body right now. Right now. Come out of the body right now. Come out. All those yoga demons. Come out right now. All those yoga demons. Come out of the body right now. All those yoga demons. Come up and out right now in Jesus' name. All the yoga demons out right now. All those yoga demons out right now in Jesus' name. Come out of the body right now. Come out of the body right now. Come out of the body right now. Every demon that came in through meditation, come all the way out right now. All the demons that came in through meditation, come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out of the body right now. Come out of the body right now. Come all the way out right now in Jesus' name. All the meditation demons out right now. All the demons that came in through Reiki, come all the way out right now. All those Reiki demons, come out right now. All those Reiki demons, come all the way out right now. All the Reiki demons, come out right now in Jesus' name. Come out of the body right now. Come out of the body right now. Come out of the body right now.